Welcome back to the channel guys and today I just want to show you a little bit of b-roll here of this beautiful Ryzen system behind me that I've been putting together the better part of this week whether it be uh, putting the Noctua cooler back in it which I just got the bracket for that yesterday or putting the Ryzen uh, system in it uh, the motherboard I picked up Monday, the CPU arrived on Tuesday. It's been a long week of building this thing out and then playing with the overclocks of it. But it's totally worth it. If you look behind me over my left shoulder, it, it's absolutely gorgeous back there. Um, and I do want to take a minute after the B-roll to go over my overclock settings, at least as they stand right now for any of you that may be looking to overclock your Ryzen chip. So straight into that gorgeous, gorgeous B-roll. <laughs> Okay, so if you are familiar with the BIOS of, or the UEFI rather, of ASUS motherboards in the past several generations, then you should be pretty familiar with what you're looking at right now. This is the easy mode of operation for the UEFI BIOS, and it just gives you some basic system information. First off, I do want to point out that this chip runs quite hot under the current conditions. It is at 64 degrees Celsius, which is one of the reasons I'm looking forward to getting this thing back on water, is I think that'll do a little bit better job, especially idle. I have my fans run at a very low speed until it ramps up a little bit warmer than that. So hopefully water will keep the idle temperatures especially a little bit more in check than does my air cooler. However, once the temperatures do go a little bit higher, it does ramp up significantly to keep those in check. Right now, it is running the current uh, CPU voltage at 1.373 volts, and that's fluctuating up a little bit. I believe it's actually set in the BIOS at 1.4 volts. However, that's just what it's currently running at. Um, you'll also notice that the DDR4 I have installed, the Trident Z, is at 2133 megahertz. Now, I can get more out of this RAM. However, I've noticed that when I do go for a little bit more, I get some system instability with the overclock on the processor. So for the moment, until this weekend, at least when I have a little bit more time to play around with these overclocks, that's just sort of what I'm stuck with. Also noted is the DOCP profile is set to my RAM, which is... Uh, rated speed of 3000 megahertz and then of course the timings at 1.35 volts that was super easy and I'll show you that here in a second you hit F7 to go on into the advanced mode now if we pop over to AI tweaker this is where you do all of your overclocking now the AI overclock tuner you can set this to either auto or DOCP I use DOCP and then set my RAM setting as well as my uh, target uh, frequency for the RAM is 29 33. However, I'm going to go ahead and move that back to auto because I don't actually want to change that right now. What had happened is I tried that and I had a little bit too much instability and it didn't work. So it defaulted back to the 2133 megahertz. So I don't actually want to change that back to 2933, at least until the weekend when I have more time to sort of play with it a little bit. Unlike Intel's Z97 platform and probably also more modern platforms, I just use Z97 because that's where I'm coming from, they don't use for the AM4 boards, they're not using just a simple multiplier on the CPU side, at least ASUS is not. They have an FID and a DID number. Now, the FID is going to function more like your multiplier and a DID is going to function more like a divider. So the nice thing about doing it this way, though, is if you notice up here in the corner, the target CPU speed is 4040 megahertz. By using a DID and FID in conjunction together, you can actually make incremental changes that are much smaller than 
um, any changes you would normally see on the Intel side of thing without ever touching your base clock. Now moving down, my DRAM timings are all on auto. My DRAM voltage is set to 1.35 as per the modules in my system's recommendation. And you'll notice that my CPU voltage here is set at 1.4 volts. And you'll notice that it doesn't really go up to that 1.4 volts. However, I will confirm that it, it will under load in system. Just when it is not under load, it won't actually go clear up to that 1.4 as you can sort of see off to the right side. So those are my current overclock settings, at least for the moment. Like I said, this weekend, I plan on diving a little bit more into this and seeing if I can really get this fine tuned. However, right now, I'm more than happy just to run it at 4,000 megahertz and sort of just let it ride at that point. I would like to hit a little bit higher of an overclock, but I am not sure if my cooling solution will allow me to do that. Once I switch back over to water, it may open up a little bit more potential. But right now, this is sort of the upper limit of where I found my Ryzen chip to be able to overclock to, which is a little disappointing. I didn't get a little bit more out of it, but it, it's still an absolute beast. Um, once you start looking at not just gaming benchmarks, but especially productivity benchmarks, multi-thread benchmarks, this thing's an absolute beast. And I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys my um, independent 1800X testing because the, the, the results are really exciting in my mind. So in addition to building this rig out of just pure love for technology, I'll also be using it as my main rig from here on out. Of course, the only difference being that I will be switching that Noctua cooler out eventually once the Corsair bracket arrives back for my H100 IV2. Outside of that, the system is virtually done for the foreseeable future. If you like this video, guys, give me a big like down below. Subscribe, share. All those things are great. You can follow me on social media at Hoosier Hardware, both Instagram and Twitter. I'm active on both, and they're both great places to get a hold of me. For now, though, I will let YouTube queue up another video for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I'm on, get out of here. I'll see you guys in the next video.